Hey savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here and today I'll be showing you how to enable virtual machine support on your computer so that you can run virtual machines. This has to be done across the board with any and every computer before you can use virtualization. I'll be showing the symptoms here in VirtualBox if you don't have virtualization enabled. I already have a bunch of virtual machines here, but just to show you some symptoms of what happens if you don't have the proper option enabled. So if I try launching one of my virtual machines, I'll get an error here and it says it failed to launch the virtual machine session and it says AMD V is disabled in BIOS. You might also have VTX is disabled in BIOS or perhaps even SVM. Either way, this is one of the clues here. Another one, if we go into settings, we'll see invalid settings detected. And if we hover over, we see that the hardware virtualization is enabled yet is not supported by the host system. This is definitely another tall tale sign. And finally, when creating a brand new machine, we'll go down to the version, at least here in VirtualBox. This also applies to things like VMware, Hyper-V, and other virtualization softwares. Anyways, in the version, if I click down in this Dropbox, all of a sudden, we only see 32-bit offerings, at least for the Windows side, as well if I toggle this type to Linux, I look in my versions and I only see 32-bit emulation available. That's not to say that it'll even work with 32-bit. It just is another symptom of not enabling virtualization in BIOS. And if you're new and stopping by to watch this video today, make sure to subscribe below for future operating system and programming videos. Now, not all processors are actually able to emulate virtual machines, but most modern ones can. Although again, you need to make sure to enable this in BIOS. Therefore, if you cannot find this option, then your hardware might not support it. All right, at this point, I'll exit out of here and I will restart my machine. That way I can access my BIOS. You'll also need to access BIOS which is just firmware that exists on your motherboard and allows you to boot up and helps detect devices or different peripherals that exist on your system. All right, I'm going to restart things here. And BIOS will change up a bit from system to system, so yours might not look exactly like mine. But in general, you'll be looking for a similar option to enable your hypervisor support, which is just a fancy way to say, allow your system to emulate a virtual machine. So on my system, while I'm booting up, the BIOS tells me to hit the F2 or delete key in order to get into my UEFI BIOS. And if I've successfully got into my BIOS, I see a screen like this. Mine's a little fancy just because it's a more updated type of BIOS, UEFI based. Yours might not look like this, no big deal. You'll be looking for a similar option. Also, if you went ahead and made it this far, please smash that like button for me. It really does help me out. So what I'm looking for is some more advanced options. I don't really have many options here on my screen currently where I can edit and change things around. What I do see in the bottom right is F7 to get into an advanced mode. Yours might be something else, but just look around and try getting to your advanced settings if necessary. And once I'm in my advanced settings, I see tabs up at the top where I can go through and select various different things. The tab I'm looking for is my advanced tab because that's where my CPU configuration exists. So this is a change that we have to make to the CPU settings. So that's at least a good place to start. If I can't find something, I actually like to scroll through every single subcategory so if I went into this first category here, I can see I have a few options, nothing that sticks out to me, but I'll go back. And what I'm looking for is for a term that mentions virtualization. Perhaps it says VTX or AMD V or SVM, and I want to enable that option. Otherwise, there's a high likelihood that your system just doesn't support or run virtual machines with 64-bit emulation. So again, I wanted the CPU configuration. And by just looking at this screen, it tells you a bit of information about the processor that I'm currently running. It says it's an AMD Ryzen 7 3700X, eight core. And it tells me a little bit about what the clock speed is and a few other things. What I want is I want to go down below and start reading the information that's available to me. Here I have a mouse so I can kind of 
highlight what I'm looking at right now, but it says to enable or disable the generation. That's not right. I'm not looking for anything like that. So NX mode, what does this do? It says it enables or disables the no execute page protection function. That doesn't sound like what I want either. I go down to the SVM mode and I see it's disabled. It says here, enable or disable CPU virtualization. This is exactly what I'm looking for. And again, I'll mention that yours might not say SVM necessarily. Yours might say VTX or AMD V, or maybe you have the exact same setup as I do here and you can find SVM as well. Here, I want to enable this mode in order to enable my virtualization capabilities. So I'm setting that to enabled in my BIOS and that's really all I wanna to touch, one thing at a time, making sure that I don't mess anything up. But this is a fairly easy change and I'm confident I can come back and disable it if things don't work out for me. The next thing I want to do is absolutely make sure I save and exit from BIOS, don't just exit because your settings that you just set will not be saved. And make sure to smash that like button for me if you haven't already. Let's go to exit and save our changes and reset. My BIOS here is fairly nice and it tells me what has been changed. My SVM mode has gone from disabled to enabled and I'm going to press OK now. I'll give my computer a few moments to boot up. All right, and I'm back in my Windows environment where I'll boot up my virtualization software, VirtualBox. And one thing I haven't mentioned is this applies to all operating systems that are running virtual machines with virtualization software. So if you're getting similar errors on a host computer, that's Linux, this method also applies. You must enable virtualization in your BIOS settings. I'll try rerunning that same Arch Linux based clone that I tried running before. Let's see if I get an error this time. I'll switch it into full screen. And this time it looks like things are launching just fine. No more errors. Congratulations if you made it this far. All right, if we go back, I'll right click and go to my settings again. And this time I'll look at the bottom and I have no invalid settings, meaning everything's working just fine. The setup is correct now after enabling the virtualization option in my BIOS. And lastly, I'll try creating a brand new machine and see if I have more options now. I'll select Linux and I'll go down and now I have either 32-bit or 64-bit options as far as version goes here in VirtualBox. Again, this applies to any and all virtualization softwares, whatever you're trying to use on your host computer. Things are looking much better but this is something very commonly missed, especially amongst beginners, and it's their first time using a virtualization software such as VirtualBox. It's also a commonly missed thing whenever you first get done setting up a new computer and you want to start using virtualization software. All of a sudden you start getting errors and a lot of times it's just that you haven't enabled virtualization in your BIOS quite yet. Well, that's about it. I hope this helped you out. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please make sure to post them in the comments section below. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Catch me and a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.